Superbase is a backend as a service that comes with a Postgres database, tons of OAuth providers for authentication, and more. And thanks to a community built module, it's really easy to add it to your Nux3 app. In this video, we're going to do just that. We'll have a simple app where people can sign up, log in, and then only see these notes if their user ID is associated with it. Before we start coding, I want to say that I'm not going to cover the Nux basics or every file in this project since we're focusing on the authentication with Superbase. But there's a link to the full repo in the description. So let's say we have a Nux project that already has Tailwind installed. In it, we have two pages. First is our homepage, which has a form containing an input, password, and submit button, as well as this button at the bottom that keeps the email and password field, but changes whether we're calling sign up or log in. And then we have this notes page, which is mostly blank for now, but we only want this to be accessible when a user's logged in. And if they are, we want to load their notes. So the first step is giving a way for users to sign up. So in our Superbase dashboard, we don't actually have to do any auth setup since email is enabled by default, and that's all we need for this to tutorial, but I'll leave a link in the description so you can set it up with other auth providers. But what we do need to do is go to our settings, API, and grab our URL and public API key and add that to a .n file with the keys superbase URL and superbase key. And these are going to be used by the Nux superbase module. Let's install that module and then go to our Nux config and add it to our modules array. So now we can go back over to our index.view page. And we'll see that when our form submits, we'll check whether we're signing up or logging in and then call the correct method. So first we need to get access to our Superbase client. So we can say const client equals use Superbase client which is a composable from the Nux module, which gives us access to the Superbase JS client. And then all we need to do to sign up is say const user error equals await client.auth.signup. And then we can pass in our email and our password. And then after this is done, let's just console.log user and error to see what's happening. And we can actually copy and paste this for logging in, but instead of sign up, we want to say sign in. All right, let's try it. So if we give it an email and a password at least six characters long, we can see this object getting logged as our user. And if we check the Superbase app, we can see that user in our authentication tab. You can also see by default, it says waiting for verification. But if I head over to my email, I can see that email from Superbase with a confirmation link. So if I click it, it'll log me in and now I'm authenticated on our app. And the way this works is that link has an access token that the Superbase client can access when the page loads and then update the logged in user. So all of this on the initial verification is happening client side. And this is similar to logging in. What this means is we can use on mounted and a watch effect to detect changes in the logged in state of our user. Let's say when someone gets logged in, they get redirected to the notes page. So first in our setup, we want to say const user equals use superbase user, which is another Nux superbase composable that gives us a reactive reference to the logged in user if there is one. And then in watch effect, we'll check if there's a logged in user. And if there is, we'll use a Nux utility navigate to to send them to the notes page. We can do something similar on the notes page where we take not logged in users and send them back to the login. So this is good for when a user logs in or out, but doesn't actually protect our routes. For example, if we log out and then go straight to slash notes, our page renders, and then we get sent to our login. And that's because this watch effect is only running on the client. If we instead want to do a server redirect on the initial request, we can do that using middleware. So let's create a middleware folder in our Nuxt app, and inside we'll create one called auth.ts. We can say export default define Nux route middleware and access the two route from our params. Inside here, let's check if there's a Superbase user, and then we'll do two if statements. The first one will check if we're trying to navigate to notes and there's no user logged in, then we can navigate back to the home page. And then the second is if we're navigating home and there is a user, then we want to navigate to notes. Then to make both of these pages use this middleware, we can say define page meta middleware auth. So let's log out and then try going straight to slash notes. We get brought back to the login. And if we log in and then try accessing our home page, we get redirected to notes. Now let's see how we can send this user information to an API call and get back specific data. But first, I want to say thanks to the sponsor of this video, Storyblock. Storyblock is a headless CMS that really helps bring your code and your content together. Even though its API works with any tech stack, I've been using the Nux3 module on LearnView's homepage and some of the blog pages, and I love how you can build reusable blocks as view components with all the interactions you want, and then you can directly build with and edit these blocks inside of a nice visual editor. So non-technical people on marketing or something can use your custom components to build content pages. It has great support for internationalization and is super extendable for your use cases. I've been really enjoying Storyblock, so I have a ton of content about them on the way. But for now, let's get back to the video. So now that we have the basics of authentication set up, let's try sending the information about our logged in user to an API call and then fetching data based off that. 
Luckily for us, this is really easy because our module gives us server super base user, which matches the request cookies to the specific user. So you don't have to worry about passing information yourself. So first we want to validate that we actually have a user. So if we don't have a user, we want to throw a 401 error. Otherwise we want to get our data, which is hard coded for simplicity, but obviously you can hook it up to a database. And then we want to return data.filter and check if our email matches our user.email. And now all we have to do is call this endpoint from our notes component. We can say const data notes equals use fetch API notes. And then we want to give it a key that contains our user ID and then display the results in our template. So now if we go to our app and log in as Matt at learnview.co, then we can see the notes specific for me. And if we log out, log back in as not Matt, then we can see the notes specific for that account. But there's one problem here. Let's try refreshing on our notes page our notes aren't loading. And this is because that initial server request isn't passing the authentication cookie through to our use fetch. Luckily, this is a one line fix. We can just go to our use fetch and specify headers and set that to use request headers cookie. Now, if we refresh exactly on the notes page, our notes will be sent with that initial HTML. So I know this was a little bit longer than my normal videos, but I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more content.